Um, shall we start as usual with the uh, injury situation, please? Uh, where are we up to? Yeah, we've got. Um, I'm looking at my list there, unfortunately. Um, Woody's been training this week, um, but obviously hasn't tried a lot. Uh, Johan's been training for a longer period with us and has got a chance to at least be in, you know, involved in some capacity. Robbie Brady, maybe. Um, Lowen's definitely not. Cork is a question mark after the other night. Um, and Barnes is definitely not. So that's a, an update on where we are with the runners and riders. The only one I've got missing there is, is Jay Rodriguez. Is he all right? Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, good good point. Um, that fellow that plays up front for us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's... Uh, He's yeah, he's got a chance. He he joined in the other day. We had to be we had to be careful with him because he obviously with the games program, his, his hamstrings were were sore. Uh, one of them particularly, that's why we took him off. Uh, but no, he's trained since um, two days after the last game uh, against Palace. He's trained, so I'm hopeful that he'll come through it and be available. Are you a little bit worried at all by the the thinness of the squad of the the players that you've got available at the moment? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's not not ideal by any means. Um, you know, you, you saw the group are still motivated the other night at Palace. You know, we're, we're literally stripped back. So um, I've got no reason to question their motivation. But of course, it is helpful. You know, the players I've just named uh, have, have been regular first team players for us for a while now and are very good players at that. So, of course, it does affect your, your choices. It affects the group. But like I say, uh, there's been a strong resolve to the, the challenge we've had here from all involved. Are you any further down the line in terms of trying to sort out one or two contracts that are, are short term for the rest of the season now? No, not that I know of. In that respect, um, you've always said that it was going to be problematic and it was something that you'd spoken to the chairman about. How would you describe the, the relationship that you've got with the chairman at the moment? Oh, just the same. You know, we, we, we always try and um, be truthful with each other, that's for sure. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a, a challenge for what's going on at the moment, but it's the way it is. It's always been that. Um, you know, our relationship and the board's relationship has always been open with the challenges that represent what we what we are in the Premier League. Um, also, the Championship, by the way, two seasons in the Championship, but it's mostly been Premier League. So um, there are challenges in the Premier League and uh, we've we found a way to get through them. With, in that respect, then, um, it's pretty clear that with, with some of the players that are leaving as well, you are going to have to recruit quite a bit during the, the transfer window. Have you spoken to him specifically about uh, targets for that? In the next yeah, you know, he, we always keep him informed on, on what what needs to be done and what will at some point will have to uh, be done. I think so. Yeah, he's certainly in the loop with the information that's important. You mentioned the game the other night. That's thirteen clean sheets you've had this season. Only Liverpool have got a better record. That is that is some achievement, isn't it in itself? Yeah, I think it is. I think when you marry that up with thirteen wins as well. Um, you know, which I think that I think it's joint fifth or something in the table of wins. So, you know, when you when you get them two things right, you, you've got a chance. Quite obviously, if you keep clean sheets, you're in every game. And if you if you're turning them into wins, or certainly thirteen is is a reasonable tally at this stage, um, then I think that's a good mixture. And it's a combination every manager wants. You definitely want to be building from clean sheets. I don't know many managers who don't, um, because you're always in a game. You've always got a chance of getting some if you keep it at zero. And then obviously at the other end, if you can. Um, you know, we can't always run over teams, but we have to find moments. And we found moments in the last couple of games that have been very important uh, and taken the game in our favour. So, yeah, I mean, I, I am pleased overall. Um, we've come through a lot of challenges this season, but we continue to, you know, work for what we get. Yeah, I mean, we consider the sort of run you had over Christmas and, and the, the fact that you were flirting with the bottom end of the table. And now people are talking about you possibly getting a, a Europa League spot as well. That remarkably turns things around in, in a big way, doesn't it? Yeah, I do think that's kind of the story for teams like us, not just us. I think there's a number of teams who, when they get it right and they put it together, can can get points on the table and get wins. And then when it when it doesn't go so well, they can get beat. And I think that's just a challenge for us, you know. And, it, and like I said, there's a there's a clutch of clubs that are very similar. Um, and it's it's how many times you can get it right, quite obviously, um, to get the right results. And we we've certainly shown. Well, we certainly showed enough to get 45 points, which is no mean feat, by the way, at this this stage, um, you know, for a club like ours. So, you know, that's a, a quite a big marker. And then we've got to stay open-minded to where it can go. Obviously, it would be very helpful if we had all them names fit that I mentioned, because I think we'd be a real competitive group um, and we can change it. Whereas at the moment, we are limited with our changes. 
Sheffield United had a, a hell of a season, um, but when they came back from lockdown, it was three straight defeats, and yet they go and bounce back against Tottenham last night. Just what do you make of them as a side and, and how good they are? Yeah, I'm really pleased for Chris. Um, top top fella, um, he always, you know, we go back a long way to the days at Watford when he used to bring his Oxford side over for reserve games and the like. And I've always got on with him, still do. Um, got a hell of a lot of respect, not just for him, for his, for his staff and his players, because I think they've had a brilliant season, regardless what comes next. I think they've had a brilliant season. Um, look, they've had a bump in the road. It was probably going to uh, come, although everyone had been saying that all season, they hadn't. Um, they have had that bump in the road, but as you rightly said, they performed well last night um, and, and got a, a really big result. So, you know, they're, they're certainly a side to be reckoned with. They've proved that. They've got players who have been open-minded to the challenge of the, champ- uh, the Premier League, sorry, and, and taken it on gladly. And, uh, you know, certainly another tough game for us. And we saw last night in that game, our old friend, the VAR controversy is back. Um, I'm sure you saw the build-up to Harry Kane's goal that was chalked off. Um, Jamie Redknapp described it as one of the worst decisions that, that he'd seen. I mean, there's no chance of us having the, the handball law rewritten in the near future as far as we can see. But where does common sense come into this, Sean, as far as you're concerned? No, I, I totally agree. I was just, you took the words out of my mouth. There has to be a degree of human common sense. Um, and I think it's too easy on, on that one last night. I think it's too easy to hide behind the laws because that's where you've just got to, it's like the VAR at Villa the other week, you know, you've just got to use your common sense. You've got to overrule that moment and say it's in, it's a goal, end of. And I think the one last night for me, it's impossible that's that's disallowed. I, I, can't, I, can't, I couldn't see anything other than a player tumbling to the floor and getting the ball kicked at him. I, I don't know how that's deemed deliberate. Um, you, but look, it's it's. I'm a big fan of VAR, so I must make that clear. I've always said that. I just think at times, you know, there still has to be not this like, oh, I've seen it from all these angles and therefore, I think there are certain moments, not many to be fair, but certain moments when you've just got to go with what you believe you're seeing rather than the letter of the law. And I think that was one last night. But they are extreme. Let's remind ourselves, there's not that many. When you think how many incidents come across a whole season in football, they get highlighted, rightly so sometimes, of course, like that one last night. But let's face it, over a whole season of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands of incidents, when you think how few we've spoken about really in the bigger picture, then I still think it's a benefit to the game. That's good for me. Thanks, Sean. Thanks. Hi, Sean. Vicky from PLP. Good to see you. Uh, just a word on the youngsters, Sean. Obviously, injuries and, and people leaving isn't something you would have wanted to have to deal with, but the youngsters that have stepped up to the first team picture, the likes of Bobby Thomas, Max Thompson, Lucas Jensen, how do you feel they've settled in just into the whole thing? Yeah, they've been good. I mean, you know, it's not an easy uh, step, uh, even when you're training with the first team players, because some of these these lads haven't trained that much for the first team, or well, certainly not on a regular day-to-day basis. They've been bought into the squad a few times and disappeared back to the 23s then come back over. But they've been training daily with the uh, first team squad. I, I certainly think it'll do them good. Um, you know, it's a big ask for them to be in and around it as in literally getting on the pitch in a Premier League game because uh, they haven't even played a league game, let alone a Premier League game. Um, but on the other hand, the, the silver lining to the cloud is that these, these young guys are getting the feel of what it is. Now, albeit a peculiar feel at the minute, because obviously the stadiums are not full, and etc. But still a feel of being in the dress room, what we require as a staff, what the demand of the other players is like. Um, you know, and I made that clear after the Palace game. You know, saying to the younger players, look at these lads who are more experienced, but look at what they're putting into that performance to get what we need to get against all the noise and the adversity and all the different opinions, staying focused on the job at hand. And I think that's a, an important part of their learning curve. And how about the impact on, on the rest of the squad? Because I think some senior players really step up to the challenge when they have a group of youngsters coming in, either to challenge them or to get them under their wing. Yeah, definitely. I mean... The demand of the older group, um, there, there's a there's a healthy demand. It's not, in my day, you got let no in, no in certain terms, let's say, by the older pros. I think there's a bit more balance to what they um, deliver now to these young young players. Um, but no, we, we, there's a healthy demand from our older players and our more experienced players. Um, again, you know, for these younger players to to guide them to what they need to do. And I think it's the staff lead that in in you know considerably. But the, but when you're in a group. The players' uh, demand is, is a big thing when you're young, and I think they're learning about that now. 
And of course, a lot of people, as we mentioned, talking about Europe. I, I think I know your answer to this one, Sean, but is that something you're discussing as a group with the players? That possible? No, no, it's impossible at the moment. We're, we're literally, I mean, we're always um, looking to the next game, but we literally are at the minute. I mean, it's, it's been hard enough sorting out a, a team, but no, actually, that's not fair. It's actually been easy sorting out a team because when you get so few players, you actually just go, right, you're all playing. Guess what? No surprise, you lot are all playing. Um, but hard in the sense of your organisation, hard in set pieces, hard to fathom out what ifs. You know, you, you always try and imagine what, what might happen in a game. You know, injuries and changes and, and that sort of thing. And that's been really difficult. Um, but no, the, the team is more or less picking itself um, at the moment. You know, we might lose Corky. I'm, I'm yet to find out with that. So it is difficult. It is difficult. Um, but the players have been fully motivated to, as I said, push away the noise, get on with the job in hand, you know, focus on what, what's right in front of you. And that's what we've got to uh, continue to do. And just a one more word on, on Sheffield United. Obviously, for a lot of people, they've been the surprise package of this season. Have they surprised you? I don't think they've surprised me in, in going about it with that edge that it is to compete. Um, I think to get so many points on the board at this stage is, is, is a fantastic achievement. Uh, but not with the edge because I've known Chris a long time and all of his teams always compete. And that's a big thing. It's having that open-mindedness to just literally compete with the demands of the Premier League. And then, of course, you've got to play as well. You've got to be effective. And I think he's tried to be effective. I don't think he's remotely trying to um, brand the, the team. I think he's trying to say, we're going to work hard and we're going to have to to get anything we can get. And they've built on that. They've built on that momentum. I certainly think a good start always helps when you're new to the division. Uh, they've got a decent start. And they've, they've never took the foot off the gas. I mean, look, they've had, a, they've had a bump in the road recently until the result against Tottenham, but that can happen. And that happens to bigger clubs than Sheffield United. Um, so I think to bounce back from that with a big result last night, he'll be very pleased with that. But he equally knows the, the demands of the Premier League side so as his players, and he'll know that our side are equally a competitive side. That's brilliant. Thank you, Sean. Best Thanks. of luck. Cheers. Hi, Sean. It's, it's Alex here. I hope you're well. Just. Just quickly on, on the injury situation now, do you feel that the, the sort of impact of the schedule and the, the weight of games and obviously the difficulties in, in managing fitness during lockdown has, has played a part in, in some of this sort of injury build-up at, at Burnley or is it more contact injuries? Well, there's no definition of it really we, because Barnsley was injured before this. Um, J-Rod was injured but has come back. Louts has got an unfortunate one on the top of his foot. Um, Woody had a minor injury before and was carrying it a little bit and that's flared up. Um, Johan had been on and off with his calf anyway and Robbie's been on and off for a while so you know is it um, you can't guarantee that it's just because we've had a, a sort of more limited pre-season window uh, and because of the games because not many of these injuries have actually happened in the games and Corky was just the other night of course and you know so um, it's a mixed bag really so I think it's just you know unfortunately a negative perfect storm you know where unfortunately the demand of the games and uh, the challenge that's in front of us has coincided with contract situations and injuries all at once. Um, and we're having to, you know, manage our, ourselves through that, both us as a staff and the players as a, as a connected unit. Yeah, given given the injuries and the contracts and I suppose maybe a form around Christmas and lockdown and everything that, that is impacted with that, if if you were to go on and, and surpass that 54-point tally you achieved to finish seventh a couple of seasons ago, regardless of whether that brings European football or not, where does that rank in terms of achievements, I guess, for, for you as a, as a season as a whole at Burnley? Well, I think it's certainly be up there, you know, because of this last phase of games. Um, you know, I said the other night at Palace, I think that's one of my, as a manager, this is. Obviously, it takes a team to deliver a, a performance and get a result. But from a management point of view, that's probably one of my best results because we're going into that game with all sorts of questions, all sorts going on off the pitch. And yet, the team has stayed resolute and focused. And not only that, but de delivered a very, very good performance. And, you know, I, I thanked them afterwards for the amount of effort, the, the pride and the, the determination they put in to pushing away the noise. We've spoken about a long time here. You know, we, we work on what's inside the camp, not what's outside the camp. And, and I think the players were, were really clear-minded on that when they were down at Palace. We're going to have to do that again. Uh, Chris will bring his side in bounce back out of a, a little tough spell and with a good result, they're going to come one in points and so do we. So we will have to do it again. But it's fair to say that, you know, I've been really pleased with how the group of, of delivered performances uh, with the noise around the, the situation. Yeah, and I guess somebody like Kevin Long who, who comes in for, 
for half an hour. He's, he's been in and around it a lot, but hasn't played as much, obviously, as he would have liked this season due to the, the form of those lads at the back. Epitomises that a little bit. There's, he, he comes in and slots in as if he's been playing there for, for week after week. Well, everyone's needed at the moment. You know, we are we are limited with the the changes we can make, um, and if an injury happens, then you know we we dilute very quickly now. So, um, you know, everyone being ready is the key, and uh, it, that's the only side of it that is unfortunate because, you know, yet again, part of the the, the the negative perfect storm, we can't even get reserve games in really to to get these lads football. So they are genuinely ready. We've just got to hope that when they get out there, their their bodies are good and and they can deliver performances. And you, you said, I think, a couple of weeks ago when we were discussing the contract situation that you, you're obviously keen to avoid a repeat of this 12 months down the line with, with the lads who are out of contract in, in 2021. Have you sort of been able to have initial discussions with board or players on on that side of things yet? Or is it still all a bit up in the air given given the wider situation? I, I, I made it clear discussions have been going on for the last 18 months. Um, it, it, you know, you, you put information, you share information uh, as a group like we do, and then it's down to the powers that be to to make the the key decisions so you know eventually that ends up on the chairman's lap so we'll we'll see what you know comes of that and just lastly on you mentioned to Fraser then about sort of recruitment in the in the summer I think you said when Mike Rigg initially came in it it was an element of catch up for Burnley in in Premier League terms in expanding the network of recruitment and we've we've seen a little bit of investment on that side as well are you pretty satisfied with the the direction that's going in and that you're getting closer to where where ultimately you want to be Whatever system you put in place, inevitably, it revolves around finance. Yeah. It's simple as that. You know, you can put as good as situations, as good a, um, you know, a lot was spoken about the Brentford model. I can assure you, I know some of the figures they've put in some of their players. So I don't think they're plucking people from nowhere and they're suddenly becoming, you know, world-class stars. I think every system needs finance. It's simple as that, whichever way you look at it. 